Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to begin our game of Shoal. This again is a prototype for Kickstarter. I'm excited to bring this game to you. If you missed the intro and setup and a little bit of the component overviews, please check out the link right up here. But if you're not interested in that and you just want to see how this game is played, then this is the video for you. I'm excited to bring you Shoal. And if you're excited as well, then I need you to meet me at the table. This game is broken down into two different phases, the shadow phase and the player phase. And the, the phase that goes first is determined by the mission. This mission that we're playing announces that the shadow phase is going first. So our menace is going to increase, which is this track right here. And if we get to number three, we're going to be revealing a menace card that we've placed right there. We would also place cards here if the mission told us to. This one did not. It told us just to put down one. So once we pass the third one, we're, the menace is just going to keep on increasing, but nothing is ever going to happen. But we're still going to do that because that's part of the game. Next, we're going to do the shadow action, boss heralds, and base shadows, and then we're going to do our generation. Now, since we don't have any base shadows or heralds or bosses, we're gonna forget the shadow action phase and go right into the generation. We're gonna go ahead and roll these two dice. This one is gonna tell us where they're gonna spawn. It's either gonna be on the triangle or it's gonna be on our circles. And if we roll this symbol right here, the herald symbol, we're gonna put them down on both of them. This is gonna show us where in relation to the omega and the alpha it's going to spawn. This would matter more past the first round and I'll show you why. But we're gonna go ahead and roll these up and see what we get we have managed to get the Herald symbol, which is an absolutely fantastic way to start. So we're gonna draw blips out of our bag. So our prototype comes with this bag that we're gonna draw these blips out of. Now we're just gonna, the problem with this is if you pull them out, you might actually see what the back side of it is, and then you gotta pull them out again. So we're gonna put it right here. These spawns are always gonna spawn trying to get to that Citadel as fast as they can. So like I said before, the Elf and the Meg on the first one isn't gonna really matter as much. It's when you have multiples kind of around that I would have to figure out where it's gonna go. So for example, say I had a blip already there, and then I had to pull another blip out of here. I couldn't put it here, so I would put it based on this die. And since the Omega symbols over here, I'd be putting it adjacent to it over there. Now, since we don't have that, we don't have to worry about it. And since I know what this is, we're going to put it back. Normally what I do is I just draw like a few tokens out of the bag, and at least one of these is probably going to be facing the wrong direction. So we're going to go ahead and put that one there, and I'll put these back in the bag and draw the rest for the other blips. Now that I've spawned all our blips, we're going to go into our character's turn. And our characters are allowed to do three actions, and they allowed a move action as well. The move is not considered one of the three you're able to do. Most common ones are reveal actions, which you'd be revealing these tokens. You can attack, you can also construct, which is going to be building the light stream. So I think we're going to start there with building our light stream. And the first person that's going to go is going to be our pioneer. He's right here. He's going to go ahead and move. The miniatures do not come painted. I painted it, and I don't know if they're going to become painted or not. Also, this is a prototype, again, of all the materials to see here. I, this miniature may not be this exact miniature when the game comes out. But he's going to go ahead and move out here one. He's allowed to move two squares based on his character card down here. He's got a two right here. So he's able to move two. If he ever wanted to move more, he has to pay his Lux, which again is not only his life, but is also his light. So he's going to move one out here. And then I think what he's going to do is try to put down some more of the light stream. Now, if we look over here on his character board, we have this right here. This is the thing that's going to put out light for us. And it's going to put it out in this pattern. And we can put them anywhere in this pattern. They don't have to connect. They just have to be in that pattern somewhere. And it's going to cost us two Lux to be able to create two light stream. That's going to be the plan. So I'm going to go ahead and tick down one. And the reason I'm only ticking down one is because I have this card right here. This card is allowed to be used in multiple ways. This is one of the cool things about this. This has three different ways of being played. One, I could play it for its actual subtract cost on the action I'm performing. So I'm trying to perform a construct action. So I'm going to pay one less Lux because of this symbol up here. Or I could play it as the card itself right down here. Or as a third way, is if I get attacked, I could discard the card as an actual defense to prevent myself from taking damage. And when you take damage, you lose luck. So again, like I said, it's your life and your light. So I'm only going to pay one to put out two light stream. 
and to lay down Lightstream. Again, we're gonna go into the bank that they gave me for the prototype. And we're gonna dig out a tile. Now you draw these one at a time, and this time it's not the biggest deal if I see what it is, because you're going to have both two different sides. You're gonna have a full light side and a waning light side. We're gonna always place down the full light side unless you're placing it next to a blip or a shadow. Then you're gonna be placing it down as kind of a weaker light. And we're gonna go ahead and put this down. Now I could put this anywhere in my Lightstream pattern. So I could put it here, 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 or here. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this out here, right there. That's gonna be a good spot to put it. Now we're gonna draw another token out of the bag. And let's see which one we get. We have got this one. Oh, that's not a very good one. All right, I think we're gonna put this one right here because I can do that. We're gonna put it right there. That's actually really good. Now there are different symbols on these light streams, as you can see. Now, if you ever connect three of the same symbol, you have formed what's called a triplet, which is good and bad at the same time. If you form a tri triplet, you're first off gonna turn all of them to their less illuminated side, meaning they're becoming a weaker light stream. But you also are able to gain three Umbra, which you're gonna be able to use to spend to buy items and things during this game that'll hopefully save you in the end. Now he's done that. He spent one Lux to create these two light streams. He's gonna do it again. He's gonna spend two more Lux to create two more light stream tiles. He's gonna go ahead and see what he gets. He has got this one right here. This is perfect. He's gonna go ahead and connect that right there. Now look, I have created a light stream all the way to this land, which is where we need to get for our first mission. We need to reach a chronicle land and we're gonna be able to do that. Now he's not because he can only move two squares, but he is gonna step up maybe one more and put down one more light stream, I think. He's gonna put this right here. Now the other one he drew is this one. Now he can put these, like I said, anywhere he wants in his light stream pattern. I think he's gonna put it right up here. That's gonna be his plan because his light stream pattern is like this. So he's aiming out here. He can go in any of these three spots. I even could put it here if I want to, which might not be a bad idea. Let's put it there. That way, if we go here and our next mission is to go down here into this one, I'm all set to go. Is it? I don't know. We'll find out. It'll be pretty awesome. Now he does have one more action, but I'm not really sure what I want to do with him. He could create more light stream, but again, it's going to cost him two Lux. I think we're going to do that. We're going to create more light stream. He's down to three Lux. He's got two vials of it left though, so he can refill it twice, but he's already down to three. So we're going to go ahead and draw our next tile. We have found this one. That one's pretty good. Let's go ahead and just kind of have these all connected. I mean, connecting to these different lands is good. There's things we can do on these lands. And the more lands we connect, the more money and umbra we're able to create by being able to drill and excavate from these. That's one of the actions you can do as well. So he's got one more he's gonna do. He's gonna go ahead and draw this one. And he has found well, this side again. Well, I guess he'll just kind of put it here. Hmm, why not? Or he could put it, he could put it over here if he wanted to. He could put it in all these different directions. He's got one of the best light sources in the game. It's ridiculous. I think he's gonna do just like that. Now I can't put it here. It doesn't connect to anything. That's not gonna help at all. We're gonna go ahead and put it here. Cause look, I've almost made a triplet and maybe I can get some money out of it somewhere down the line. Now that he's completed his three actions, I'm actually gonna have the Maynard over here. He's got this card. I'm gonna have him use this. It's like a helping card. It's amazing. This game is really cool. They've got a lot of cards you can help with your teammates. This one says during a teammate's turn, give him or her three movement points. I'm gonna play that card to allow him to move three. One, two, three, and he's gonna go right over here and reveal this land. Let's see what land he has found. He has found the Frozen Dam. All right, we're gonna put that down here. Now the Frozen Dam has four different places you can stand and you're able to gain one Umbra every turn that this thing is connected if your excavation marker is on it. It's one of the things you can do. Maybe a better plan would have been to get the path to here, use that card and then excavate instead of putting these other lights a light stream down, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with what it is. Now, whenever we do reveal one, we also get to see if it has a mission or an event tied to this location. So we're gonna go ahead and look through this entire deck here. And this is just the prototype stuff of what they have given me. Just imagine how many more they're gonna be in the actual game. This is amazing. So it says right here, Frozen, was it the Frozen Dam is FD, FD. So I've got a mission and two events. Now, when you go to draw these, you draw these in this order. So since the mission is on top, I'm gonna to take the mission. Now, if there's already a mission out, for a land of any kind, you're gonna bypass the mission and go right to the first event. If you do that event, you're gonna go and somebody else comes to it, you're gonna check and see if there's another event. And if at some point there's nothing left, there's nothing left in that land. It's just how it works. So we're gonna go ahead and read our mission for this frozen dam. It says, freedom! In the land of the night, the shadows have devoured almost every form of life. Only insects and bacteria survive. 
Certain species kept in captivity by humans have adapted to the dark. Chickens have lost their feathers. A species of fat moles are reared instead of pigs, while rabbits have gone blind. Knowing this, you don't find it strange when a man emerges from a small farmstead near the dam and shouts at out that some devourer-class shadows want to eat his moles. So my mission is to kill three devourers. So I've got an extra little mission. Then if I complete the mission, I will flip this card and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna put this down here with the rest of my missions. Now, sadly, even though I'm here, I can't actually perform this mission test because it's an action to actually perform the mission. So again, like I said, it probably would have been a lot smarter not for me to put these down, but a little too late. I should have moved here to move the three from that card and then left my last action to be able to complete this mission. But that's okay. We're going to move into our Maynard's turn and he's pretty quick. He's going to get there real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. He needs to move up to six squares. All right, I've got a plan for him. We're going to go ahead and move into his turn. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to play his light stream surfer. It says, use this card to move the character to a constructed light path within five cells. And within five cells, one, two, three, four, right here, it's within five cells. He's going to move there with his light stream skipper or surfer. Now he's going to actually do his move of three. So he's going to go one, two, three, it costs two to move over a character. And his first action is to do the mission action. He's gonna use this. It says, to find the fugitive, you will need to install a few detectors that will allow the pinpointing the position with accuracy. So I have to reach a chronicle land. And I've done that, and I'm now carrying out a mission action. So I will go ahead and check out card C. So here we have mission card C. We're gonna flip it over. It says the first detector turns on, but it is not sufficient to pinpoint the position of the fugitive. So we have to reach a forgotten land and perform a mission action. When you do, perform the challenge. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and see what a challenge is like once we get to a forgotten land. Now the forgotten lands are any of the lands that have the two arrows on them. So we've got one here, and we also have one right up there. So we have two different possibilities of getting to a forgotten land. Now that's his first action, he's done the mission action. Now he's got two more actions left. He's probably gonna go ahead and try to construct some more light. He's gonna spend one of his lucks to create a light path and he's gonna put it right here. I think that's gonna be his plan. Let's see here, he's moved one, two, three. He could move five if I want him to by spending more Lux. So we're gonna go ahead and create a light path. So we're gonna reach into our bag and see what we get. We have got this one. Oh, that's actually a really good one. Nice little big one here for us to go anywhere we want after this. Now, we're one square away from this character here. We're gonna perform a Construct action maybe? No, not construct, we already did our construct. So that's one action we've done. Mission action is two. Our third action, we're gonna go ahead and spend a Lux to add two more movement to ourselves. Because we look at his character card, he has three base movement, he can pay a Lux to add two more to his movement. So he's gonna move up to here, and he's gonna go ahead now and do a reveal action on that blip. So he's gonna go ahead and look at his reveal it is right here. He's going to pay one Lux, and it can be in anywhere in this pattern. So we can reveal anything in that pattern that he's in. So he has the ability to reveal this. Actually, I think he could have revealed it from back there, couldn't he? No, he has to be standing here, and then that's the pattern around. Okay, so he could do here, here, and here. That's it. So he's going to reveal the blip, and he has found this. He has found one of these guys. This is the lurkers. I think these are the lurkers. These are the guys we're looking for to help us do kill the three devourers. That's the plan. This is, oh, it's not a devourer, it's a lurker. So the lurkers are gonna come out, they look like this. Now again, not painted up, I don't believe, unless the Kickstarter is doing that, but I've painted up myself, and I'm gonna go replace him with one of these. Now we also are gonna look at his character card here. The lurker, out on the board, when he is revealed, move one cell toward the scout, and if near, make one make one damage to him or her. Now, of course, all these characters are called scouts. I've just been calling him a scout because it's kind of what seems to be his role. So he's gonna take one Lux damage. So he's gonna take one damage, and we've done all three of our actions now, which means we're kind of at the mercy of this thing. I don't think I set myself up very well for this. This wasn't the best round I think I've ever had, but that's okay. We're gonna move into our next person's turn. The next character we're gonna use is gonna be the Whisperer. Normally I kind of move my guys around a lot better than this. We usually have some go off in other directions, but I need to save him. He's about to get really banged up. He's gonna move his speed value, which is three. If you look at his card, he's got a total of three. And he also can gain one extra one by spending a luck. So he's gonna move one, 
two, three, and then he's gonna spend a Lux to move four to right there. And now the next thing that's gonna happen is I'm again gonna have my character down here play this card again to give him three movement points. We're gonna give him or her three movement points. One, two, three to right here. And now he hasn't done any actions yet. He's gonna do a shoot action. He's gonna take this lurker out if he can. He's got his hunting rifle. Now his hunting rifle's range pattern is he cannot target that square, but he can target this square and the one after it. Now there, I don't believe there's any type of line of sight in this game, so I can actually shoot through my own people, I believe. We're gonna go ahead and roll this up. So the way attacks work is you're gonna roll dice to see if you're able to hit. So we're gonna go ahead and take a shot. It's gonna cost us one Lux to do two damage to this thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and pay this card. I can use it just for its top value. I can make it so it costs me nothing to take this shot, and that's gonna be the plan. I don't think this one's gonna be any good, but I can do that as well. Pay two movement point to rate, nope, I can't. I've already used all my movement point. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make our shot to try to do two damage. So we're going to roll up, it's a custom die for this game, and we're going to see what happens to this lurker over here. So we rolled it up, and we got a bullseye with a black symbol, which is a hit. So we have done two damage to that lurker, and we're going to shoot him again. We've only, what, we've moved all the way up here. We haven't done anything else. This is our first action. Our second action is going to be to shoot again. Now this time it is going to cost us one Lux, which is going to drop us down to six. We're going to roll our die and see how we do. We're going to roll it. And we got this symbol, which is a critical hit if the shadow is revealed and the shadow is revealed. So not only do our two damage, which kills our lurker, but we have also triggered his critical attack, which allows us to add two damage to my attack. Well, a little too late. Wish we got the critical the first time, but that's okay. We were able to do enough damage to take this guy out. We still have one more action we can perform. And if we wanted to, we could maybe construct some more light or we could do another action of some sort. The action we're gonna do is an excavate action. So I'm gonna go ahead and place his excavation token down on this land. It's gonna cost him one Lux, but he's gonna be able to gain one Umbra at the beginning of each turn of his turn there. There's a special part where he's gonna be gaining resources. This is just a card that's not on the board. I just wanted to show it to you. So it costs him one Lux to put an excavation token down and up to three people can have an excavation token down on a land at any one time. And he's able to gain one Umbra as long as he has connected to the Citadel. The land is connected to the Citadel. He can move off this, that's fine, but as long as the land is connected, he's able to continue to gain that Umbra. Also, you can't ever put more than just one of those tokens down for yourself. I couldn't put three of the Whisperers here to try to get three Umbra. You only have one. Now, we only have one guy left, and that's this guy. It's his turn. And sadly, I think he's gonna be the one-man wrecking crew out here. He's gonna to try to take almost all of these guys out, or at least try to stop them from hitting the Citadel and doing damage. Remember, if this thing takes 10 damage, we are done. We have lost the game. So he's gonna go ahead and step out and start creating some light streams. So he only has a gun torch is what he's got. So it goes straight ahead and it costs one to go ahead and construct these light streams. So he's gonna do that. He's gonna go ahead and spend one. So let's see what light stream he was able to pull out of this bag. He has gained himself one of these. That's not the greatest. I guess he'll put it there. He'll move up. Those are his two movements. He's going to create one more light stream. We're going to go ahead and put that down. We'll put it right. Let's see which one we got. We got another one of these. <laughs> He's going to be going diagonal all over the place. Now I could pay one Lux to go ahead and move him over here if I want to, and I probably will. So he's done a construct action for one, and a construct action for one, he's moved two, he's gonna pay one Lux to move over here, and now he's gonna go ahead and construct one more time. So he's done three actions are his construct actions. So we're gonna go ahead and put one more light stream down. We have put down one of these, that's actually a really good one. We're gonna put it just like that. And that's gonna be his full turn, he is done. Now anytime you take out a revealed Shadow, you're gonna go ahead and gain one umber, so he, this person is up to four. Now all of our characters have activated, so we're gonna move back into the shadow phase, so we're gonna increase the menace. And according to our mission setup, when it gets to three, we're gonna reveal our card here, and let's see what has happened. Our, we have going to have to deal with this. If you don't kill a shadow with a single attack, it makes a counter attack. Oh wow, that's pretty bad. All right. We're gonna put that right there. All of our shadows now have to do that. That's gonna be pretty bad for our characters. 
Now we're going to go ahead into the next part where the shadow actions are going to perform boss heralds and base shadows in that order. Now we only have base shadows on the board, so we're going to go ahead and roll our alpha and our omega die to see how these move, and I'll show you how that works. So we're going to roll it. We got an omega plus, which is absolutely terrible, which means that all of our blips are going to move towards this omega stream. Now if these ever hit the stream, they're just going to go straight towards that citadel no matter if you roll alpha or omega. But for the time being, these are going to move toward the omega stream. And since I rolled a plus symbol, that means they're going to move twice. So I was planning to take that guy out, but now he's actually here. Now we're going to go ahead and move the rest of them up there. So these are all going to move towards this omega. This is ridiculous. Wow, what a terrible way to start. Okay, the next thing we have to do is spawn. So we're going to go ahead and roll our spawn die and see what we got. We got triangle. So all of the triangles are going to gain new blips. So let's go ahead and put these down. We're going to go ahead and start grabbing them out of here. We've got one here. We're going to put it right in the corner. We've got some more here. We're going to put this one in the corner over here, corner over here, and that's it. They're only on that side of the board. So now we got to get these guys over here. Oh, I did a terrible, this was a terrible first turn. We got. He's going to hold his own down here. He's got four guys he's going to try to deal with. Wow, that guy's going to be a wrecking crew. Now these guys are all going to have to, one I think is going to have to try to get back and help him out. So we're going to go ahead and go into our player phase, and we're going to start by light shields, actions, and movements recharge. So he only has two cards, so he gets to draw a new card, and he has received sight adjustment. Wow, he's going to, he should start shooting something. He's got three of them. He's also going to gain back all his actions. His lux is going to remain where it is. That does not change. His movement is actually supposed to be a two, not a three. His movement is going to be staying the same as well, because he's only got a two. The main nerd is also going to gain back three, and he's also he's going to get three cards because he's down to one. One, two, and three. Let's see what cards this character has received. Now, if you ever run out of cards, you can pay Lux to shuffle your deck and bring it back if you wish to. You don't have to. So I'm going to Fearless Leap. During the movement action, you can pass an empty cell as long as the next one is a path or land. That's pretty good. Of course, I can also pay one less for my movement advancement if I want. He's also got Master of Arms. During an attack action, use the Overlord of a weapon without damaging it. And the last one he's got is Dancer in the Dark. During an attack action, roll one extra die and choose the best result. And of course, these are all going to help him with lower the cost of certain actions. So we're going to put those right there. The only person we have left is the Breathless. He's the only the one that used a card, so he's going to gain one more card as well. He received Relocating Techniques, which we already have. So he's going to take that card. All our reactions are going to reset to three, and we're going to continue on to the rest of their turns. We're again going to start with our Pioneer. He's going to start by doing a Construct action. I've got a plan. It's usually not a very good one, but we're going to give it a best shot. We're going to go ahead and dig into our Lightstream bag, and we're going to pull out a couple tokens. So he's going to go ahead and gain this token. I'm going to put it right here. That's just fine. And then we're also going to put out one more token. It is this one, and it's going to go right here. That's also pretty good. All right, one, two, actually, do I even need this one here? I don't think I do. I'm going to put that one there, and this, oh, he can't put it there. It's got to be within that, his pattern, which is right here. So, yep, he's going to put his two tokens just like that. Now, I could put it over here if I wanted to, but I don't know what good that's going to do. I think we're going to be just fine doing that. So that's his first action he constructed. Now, that cost him two lux. He's almost out of his first vial. Now, he has to, he can move if he wants, and he has two more actions he can perform. He can go one two, and I could create again more light maybe to try to get up to here. That wouldn't be a bad idea. One, two, and then one, two. I could create some light right here. I could pay one more to maybe get some more light up in this area. Oh, not a bad idea. We can get to this land. Now remember, we have to try to get to one of these lands to perform our next set of, uh, in, during our mission. That's our next plan. So I think he is. He's going to use two more Lux. So using two more Lux to perform this action, he's going to go one down to zero, and then he's going to go back up here. He's going to pay one, two. He's going to go back to here. Now he's going to flip this to one. Now he still has, this is his full vial. And he gets one another full vial. But you can see how fast this Lux can go, especially with this guy when he's creating a whole bunch of light out there. Now before we move into his next construct action, I actually want to go ahead and put an excavate token down. I should have done that before I actually started his moving and constructing. It would have been really silly not to because Umbra is really important in this game to try to get some awesome items. So he's going to do an excavate action, move, then he's going to do his construct action, move two squares, and do another construct action. So we're going to go ahead and reach into our bag and see what we get. We were able to get, let's see, hopefully some good tokens. We got, oh, a good token. All right, that's a really good one. We're going to put that one right there. Now, of course, remember, it has to stay within our pattern. So the next token we gain 
is, well, that one's not too bad. I guess I'll put it right there. We're trying to connect to this land. So slow, slow and steady wins the race. That's the plan. All right, that's going to be the end of his turn. He's completely done. I think we're going to move into the Whisper. I think the Whisper and him are going to start traveling together, and I'm going to try to get that guy back down that way, the Maynard. I want to call him the scout, but I have to remember all these guys are scouts. So at the beginning of his turn, since he has, Avin, has an excavation token here and he's connected to the Citadel, he is going to gain one Umbra, which really is going to help. He's actually up to five Umbra right now. One, two, three, four, five. And you can buy things at the market anytime you want, and they don't actually cost any action points to do that. The first thing he's going to do, though, is move three. One, two, three. He's going to move to right there. And now if we look at his light source, his light source is able to see three spaces away. Miss this one, one, two. That's perfect. I'm going to reveal this token and see what it is. A reveal action shows that we have found a devourer. So our devourer is going to go onto the board. He's going to go right there. Now the devourer himself is going to have a reveal action. Oh, sorry, bump the camera. Put a coral obstacle under it. So he's going to be placing these obstacles that we cannot build light streams on or move through. And the the actual shadow creatures, when they move, they're going to jump these. It's almost like they had a free space, which is awesome for them. Now, he is one, two, three squares away. He has three health. I can maybe try to kill him with the Whisperer. Let's see what his gun looks like. His gun has an awesome firing pattern. It's the same, pretty much, as his light stream pattern. So he is able to hit this, but he can only do two damage. But I could attack with an overload and do three damage, which might not be a bad plan. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and discard this card so I don't have to pay a Lux to fire my gun. But when we do fire it, we're going to fire it at the overload. Now it has two damage it can take before it's going to break and I'm going to have to repair it with Umber and an action, which is going to be terrible. But I'm going to go ahead and roll our die and see if we hit him. Now he's exposed, so I'm already going to do two damage to him. But if I do get a special hit, I could actually do an extra one, which means this is going to be a failed attempt. Now, if I ever see a bite mark on this die, this is the enemy die. I'm going to take a damage to my weapon. Now let's see how we do. We've got a hit here, and then we're going to go ahead and see how our bite mark is. Oh, we didn't get a bite, so our thing did not take any damage. But sadly, this is a terrible die. This symbol right here means that I have hit minus one if the enemy is at least half revealed. And he is half revealed. He's totally revealed. That's awesome. So I only actually did two damage to him right now, which means we have to spend another Umbra to try to take this guy out. So he's down to five, or sorry, not Umbra, Lux. He's down to five Lux. So he's going to fire again with his gun, but I'm not going to overload it this time. There's no reason to. He only has one health left. He's taken two and he has three. So we're going to go ahead and roll. And of course, we've got the super symbol. That's a hit plus one if the shadow is revealed. And it, of course, is revealed because it's him. So we've gone ahead and killed him, which means we get one token towards our freedom card that we've been working towards. So we're going to gain one of our three kill devourer tokens here. So I'm going to place this token right down on that card to symbolize that we have one of them done. And those are all three actions for our Whisperer. So sadly, that means he is done. We're going to move on, I think, over to him. We're going to go ahead and have the Maynard go, and he's going to pretty much do a big sprint. He's going to attempt to run up and try to help him with some of the stuff going on up here. So he's going to move one, two, three, and then he's going to go ahead and play this card to make it so he has, doesn't have to spend any Lux to gain another two speed, one, two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain another two speed by paying two Lux. So you have to double this every time you want to pay to get more during your turn. So he has to pay two Lux now to move two more spaces. So he's going to move one, two back into here, and then he's going to be able to help him out next turn. So the Maynard is sitting at three. He also could do some illuminating if he wants to. He's got this card that allows him to illuminate, but sadly, I don't think there's really much he can, he can illuminate like this square, that square, and this square. So that's not going to help at all. Wow, maybe I should have done a <laughs> excavate action before he left. He's actually not really going to be doing any actions. He just needed to get back to help this guy out because, look, he's going to be starting to get surrounded by all these blips up here. So the first action he's going to perform is a reveal action, and he's going to go ahead and pay this card so he doesn't actually have to lose any Lux to reveal this token. He's going to reveal it, and let's see what we have found. We have found 
another one of those devourers. That's perfect. So we're going to put the devourer out here on the board, and we're going to take him out. This is going to be awesome. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to play one man army. During an attack action, you inflict one more damage if there is at least one ally within five cells. And you bet there is. He's within five. One, two, three. He's three away. I'm considering this all one cell. If that's wrong, I apologize, but that's what I believe is the plan. We're going to go ahead and shoot my gun. This gun goes a total of two squares, one, two. I can hit that guy. It already does two damage, plus I'm getting the plus one from my actual one-man army gun. So I already do three damage. As long as I don't roll some terrible roll, things should actually go okay. So we're gonna take our attack die and roll it out and see what we get. We got a critical hit if the shadow is revealed, and he is, so he's going to take three damage, which is enough to destroy our Devourer. Our Devourer only has three health, so he's gone. We're going to gain another token for our freedom mission. I'm going to go place it right down there. We only need one more Devourer, and we have completed that mission. Also, I'm going to be gaining an Umbra for killing a revealed creature. And we're going to go ahead and put that armor right here. And I also forgot to give one to the Whisperer. He also was able to take out one as well. Now he's done a attack action and he's also done a reveal action. He only has one action left. And I did have to take off a couple Lux for his actions. So we're going to take off, move, go ahead. Oh, those are his movement. What am I doing? He's down to one action. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and do his last action to go ahead and do a, like a construct action. I think that's going to be our best bet. So we can get closer to either some of the blips or we can get closer to that land. So that's going to cost us one Lux. So we're going to go ahead and reach into our bag and find out what we have here. We have this one. Oh, it's not really going to be the greatest, I guess. I guess I'll put it right here. Why not? That'll be just awesome. Now he has one more movement. He's going to move right up here. And I believe that is going to be the end of his turn. So that brings us back to the shadow phase. So our menace again is going to increase. Now if we would have been playing with more cards up here, it might have increased into another one by 6 or 10 or something. So as we go into other campaign and missions, we're going to be seeing more and more of these cards that could help out the shadows. But for this mission, this track really becomes inconsequential. It was just supposed to be a preview as to how this mechanic works. So the next thing we have to do is go ahead and move all of our guys. We're going to roll our die again. And we got the Omega symbol again. So we're going to be moving all our guys towards this Omega symbol. He's going to move that way. That guy's going to move that way. He's going to move this way. This one's in the light stream. That one's going to move this way. This one is going to move onto this land. And when it reaches the land, it's going to have to stay there. It doesn't continue down. It kind of stays and protects that land. Now this one is also going to move over, and that's all of our character, all of our blips moving on the board. The next thing we have to do is spawn our blips, and they're all going to spawn at the triangle symbol again. Wow, the triangles are getting a lot of blips. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put out all our blips. I'm just going to reach into here and grab a bunch of them, and we're going to go ahead and put them down. So not that one, but we can put this one down. We're going to put that one right there. Our next one we're going to put down, we have a couple up here. So we'll put one there, and we'll put one right there. So look at all these blips on the board. Oh, I don't know how we're going to take all these down. But if we can complete the mission, that's at least going to be enough to stop the blips from coming. Now again, we're going to reset our characters back to three, and we're going to draw up to his four cards. So he used one of his cards last time. He received another Dancer in the Dark. So he's going to put that in his hand. Now let's see who else used a card. Our Cyclops used a couple cards, so he's going to grab two new cards. Let's see what he has found. He has found Safeguard. It's where I can prevent allies from being damaged. And then, oh, check this one out. Charged Lux Emitter. Pay three Lux and one action. Attack all targets within two cells, then push them one cell away from you. This is one of his special cards. Each of the characters have like a special ability card. And as the Citadel grows in power, the card itself grows in power. I believe that's how this mechanic works. So he can pay three and one action to attack all targets within two cells and then push them one cell away. Oh, that'll be really, really good. All right, so those are going to be his. Now, he doesn't have anything up here that can help him just to pay for the card to help something, but he can always discard this to prevent damage. Now the hunter also used one card, so we're going to go ahead and grab a new card for our hunter. We've gotten Holding Breath. We've read that one before. 
So we're going to be able to move over to our Pioneer's turn. I know I always seem to start with him, but he has that ability to put down so many light streams that it's just so much fun to start with him. He's going to gain an Umbra because, of course, our land is still connected to the Citadel. So he gets one more. He's up to, I believe, four or five of these. He's up to four. He has four Umbra, which is pretty good. Now he's going to move one, two over here, and he's going to go ahead again and pay two Lux to put down light streams. He's going to put down two more light streams. We're going to reach into our bag and see See what we have found. We have found this one. Oh, that's a perfect one. We're going to put that right off. Maybe we should put it right over here. We're going to put it right here. I know I'm only going in two different directions, but that's okay. We're going to put that one there, and then we're going to go ahead and reach in the bag and grab one more. We have found this one. All right. We're going to put that one. Oh, I don't want to put that one there. Look, it makes a triplet. Well, that's not, that's not the end of the world. If I make a triplet, that means I'm going to go, oh, but it's going to already come in weak because it's right next to this guy. Oh, I lied. I'm going to put this over here. That'll be where we put that. Now we've gotten this one. Now I'm going to put this one over here, but it's going to come in already damaged because it's going to be next to a blip, which isn't going to be very good. Now he's moved. Where did he move? One, two. He's moved two. He's going to spend another Lux to move. So he's already used one, two, three Lux. Oh, he's running out real quick. This guy drops Lux real fast. Now he's only done one construct action. He's going to go ahead and do a reveal action on this one. Oh, and he found a lurker. A lurker is going to come right at him. It moves, I believe, one cell towards the person. So he's going to move right there. If we look at his card, his reveal action is move one cell towards the scout. If it near, make one damage to him. So he's going to do one damage to our pioneer. But I can go ahead and discard this as a defense card so I don't actually take the damage. So that's going to help us out a little bit. Now, since he's revealed, I can go ahead and shoot him. And I probably need this during an attack action, re-roll the scout die and keep the new results. I'm going to probably play this card. But first, we're going to just, well, I might get a real good roll here, so I might not want to do that. It's going to cost him one Lux to shoot his gun. It takes one Lux to do two damage. Now, the Lurker only has one health. So if we can at least hit him, that's all we got to do. So we're going to roll our die and see what happens here. We got a hit, which is a critical hit. That's going to be awesome. Look at what it says here. As a free action, you can build a path in the lantern pattern. Oh, that's awesome. So I can get one more path. And we also kill this guy. And he gains an Umbra for that. So he's up to another Umbra. Now he's got five. That's great. Now he's going to go ahead and build a light pattern. Why not? That's the best thing ever. We're going to go ahead, reach into our bag here, and we have found this one. It's just a straight one. Okay, well, we'll maybe we'll start moving towards that plan, that one over there. It's not a bad idea. We're going to do that. Now, that's the end of his action. He revealed, he shot, and he constructed. That was great. Now we're going to move into our Whisperer's turn. I kind of do both these guys, and we're going to go do the other guys. The Whisperer is going to move one, two, three, and he's going to pay one more four to move right there. That's going to cost him one Lux to move the extra speed. Now, the next thing he's going to do is he's probably going to reveal, and then he's going to fire, I bet, is what he's going to do. He's going to go ahead and discard this to reveal for free. He's going to reveal this token. And it is, it is, a, what is this? Oh, this is a moth. This is the moth character. Now, the moth is going to come on the board. And if we look at his card, it says it moves one cell away from the scout. So I believe it's going to move, well, I can't move back under another blip, so I'm just going to move it one that way. That'll be fine. He's going to move right there. Or maybe probably move towards the Citadel, I guess. He'll move right over there, but he wants to move away from him. So he's going to move right there. That's going to be the plan. All right. He's moved there, and now we've done a reveal action, and we've moved. Now, I could pay two more Lux to step onto this, and that's probably what I'm going to do. We're going to pay two more Lux from the Whisperer to step here, and he's going to reveal this land, and it is People Forest. Wow, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> a forest full of people, or maybe it's a it's a forest made out of people. Who knows? We're going to go ahead and put his character there, and we're going to draw the next card for that people forest. Now, if we look at the cards associated with the people forest, PF, I've got a mission, but I'm already doing a mission for another one, so that does not happen. So we have to go to our first event. It says, Forest of Bodies. The plane gives way to a petrified forest that has nothing left of veg vegetal. A nefarious wind blows through the skeletal stems dotted with coral. You realize that from one of the trunks, in the midst of strange growths, an object that looks like an ancient weapon appears, a remnant in good condition of the great retreat that took place here. I can either ignore it, 
or I can attempt to extract the object. Well, we're obviously going to be trying to extract the object. So we're going to be performing a challenge. Now, the way the challenge works is we're going to be rolling our three challenge dice here. So I've got three dice that have all different types of symbols on them. I've got the these different symbols that are the same as the spawn symbols. These are going to be our challenge dice. We're going to roll these up. Now, if two of these have, the, if we're able to create this out of two of the three dice, we have completed the challenge. If I was this archetyped, I would be able to re-roll a die for each archetype I have. And there's only one in there, but sadly, I don't have that archetype. He is the sniper kind of guy, so he doesn't have that. But I think we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. We're going to try to extract the object. Why not? What, what, can, what can possibly go wrong with this? We're going to roll our dice. All right, we got absolutely nothing that's going to help us. We needed this symbol, and we didn't get any of those symbols. So we're going to flip over our card and see what happens. So we have failed. It says the trunk cracks and then collapses like glass. It hits you in full. Add a wound to the deck. Oh, that's terrible. Now, I also get to add plus one of this faction. I get to grab one of their tokens, and I get to add it to my character. And that means this faction is going to grow in power in our citadel and probably gain us benefits. Even though we failed this, we still got something out of it, which isn't too bad. But I am going to add a wound to my deck. So this wound is going to go on top of the discard pile. And I'm going to shuffle it back in. If we ever need to get her cards shuffled again, we're going to shuffle them back in. I know I call them hers and hers and him the whole time. But that's the way it works. So this might not be seen in this game, but somewhere down the line, you may see these cards and want to try to get them out of your deck. The next thing the Whisperer is going to do is I believe he's going to go ahead and shoot the moth. I'm going to go ahead and spend this, meaning I don't have to pay anything to make this attack. And we're just going to roll our die and see what happens. We got a hit. That's a straight hit. It does two damage, and our moth has exactly two health. So we've gone ahead and taken out our moth. That's awesome. And we're going to gain another Umbra for our, what is it, the Whisperer, or the Breathless. Sorry, the Breathless. I keep calling it the whisper, but that's okay. Whispers and Breaths are all about the same. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's got a lot of Umbra. She should probably be buying something. Now, this would have been a really good one to buy. I should have probably looked at this before we went moving all over the place. Pay one action to close the singularity at range three. Shadows surrounding the singularity are stunned. We're really close to singularity. I think I might actually pick this up for six. That's really a lot of money, but it can close off one of the spawn points. And if we look, I think we said we had six, didn't we? One, two, three, four, five, and six. We got seven. That's awesome. So the Breathless, even though I even call it the Whisper, is going to go ahead and spend all those to gain this card. We're then going to go and restock it with this. Reflex Sight. Increase the rain, weapon range by two until the end of the turn. That's not too bad. Now the final action that the Breathless is going to do is she's going to perform this mission action. She's going to go ahead and roll these three dice and hopefully get those two symbols. Now sadly she is not a Cyclops so she does not have uh, this archetype. And I don't even have this archetype available in the prototype. So there are other archetypes out there that you're going to be able to play in the base game. There's more than just four characters you're going to be able to get. Just think of all the possibilities and all the neat little decks you can get. Now we're going to go ahead and roll our dice. So please don't fail me. So I think we got it. Let's check out this card here. It says we need this symbol, which is right here. And then we need we need this symbol right here. We did it. We completed the challenge. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. All right, so we completed the challenge. So, I mean, we were successful. We get to read card E. So card E says, placing the second detector proves more complex than expected due to an unforeseen malfunction. But thanks to your engineering skills, you're able to fix it and the detector picks up the fugitive signal and a menacing signal as well. well. That doesn't sound good. Check which of the following cells is the furthest from each character, D13, H17, or Q15. Place a star objective in that cell Place a Herald Awakener in Berserk State in the same cell. Oh my gosh, you're going to be killing me. Kill the Awakener Herald, reach the objective marker, and perform a mission action. Wow, that's amazing. So let's go see what cell we're going to be putting this in. So Q15 is right here. I highly doubt that's going to fit the bill. Let's go check on the other ones. So H17 is right here, and D13 is right here. So we have to find the one that is the farthest from each character. So this character technically can come out either one of these. So one, two, three, four, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one is actually the farthest one, I believe, from anybody. So I'm going to put that there. Then I also have to put the Herald, the Awakener, sorry, the Awakener Herald down. Now, these are all going to be miniatures in the actual game, but for now, it is just a standee. It is right there. Now, we have to look at our Awakener pack here. It says, the Awakener, oh, it's a Herald. It says, I'm going to move towards nearest generation point. Wow, all right. In effect, add, oh, wait, it's going to become in berserk. It's going to come in a different state. It's going to have a totally different way of playing. It says, it does not move. Target scouts close, target scout closer to it. Oh man, okay, that's awesome. And then the effect, the spawn points in the target spawn double in the range. Oh, the range of four. So any spawns within the range of four of this character are gonna double, that's terrible. This is its range. These are many actions it have. This is how much damage it does, this four damage. And it has two speed, but it's not actually gonna move. And then it has two times the amount of people. So it has eight health. Draw a hyper shadow and spawn it in as if the awakener was a spawn point. So that's what happens if it rolls a critical. So now let's see how this works. Target scout closer to it. So that's within range four in order for us to, okay, I think I see how this works. So he doesn't move. We have to go kill it because we have to go stand on this point. If I get within range four of this thing, it's going to start dragging me towards it. And it's probably going to start damaging me. So now we're going to be moving over to these two characters, and we have to try to get to that character, and he's going to start pulling us right to him. So we have to figure out how we're going to deal with this. This character can just instantly start moving in that direction because she's he's, he or she is right in the citadel here. I could just step right off here and start creating light paths to him if I wanted to. That's probably what's going to happen. But let's see what he can do. He could, sadly, I really wish this was facing that way. I could blow up both those blips. Because remember, I still have to try to take these blips out because if I don't kill that thing, I, there's still probably more to the mission. I've got to get here and then something else is going to happen. These blips are going to just keep on coming. And if they start attacking the Citadel, I'm going to lose just from the death of the Citadel. All right. I think he's going to go ahead and go. No, I think I'm going to have this person go first. This person is going to move right towards that thing and try to take it out. One and then she's gonna go ahead, or he is going to start making some of these light streams. So if we look at her cards here, she or he has only things that help with attack actions. So she cannot, or he cannot stop this spread of taking Lux. One, two, three. I'm gonna do three Lux and just create three light streams. And I'm gonna have to flip this to the one side. I've already gone through one vial of Lux, but I am gonna create some light streams here. That's what we have to do. We're gonna have to try to get to that thing. So we're gonna reach in our bag here and pull out one. We have gained, oh, that's a really good one. We're gonna put it, let's see, where can I put it? Oh, I can put it anywhere. Well, I'm gonna put it up here. I'm getting to that land might not be a bad idea. We're gonna go ahead and see what else I find. I have found this one. That's another, another, another one that's not too bad. So now I've connected myself to that land. That's gonna be perfect. One, so she's, this person has moved one, two, three, and now I could do a reveal action on that if I wanted to. So I've done two construct actions and I could do a reveal action as well. Or I could even step onto the land and it will automatically reveal that creature. Oh, this is a tough call. I think I'm also gonna, I think I'm gonna do one more construct action. That's what I'm gonna do because I wanna try to get this light stream to where this thing is. Okay, so I've got another one and it's gonna go right there. Now I haven't made any triplets. Nope, no triplets. So I've gone one, two, three. Okay, I can't, I, could pay to move there, but I'm not going to. That character is done. Now it's time to get this guy back. One, two, three. I think it might be what I'm going to do here. If we can get him back. One, two, and then he's going to spend a Lux to move three to right there. I think that's going to be our best bet, or maybe not. Maybe creating a light stream and just taking these guys out might be the best idea. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to construct. He's going to use one of his Lux to construct. Oh, that's a terrible one to construct. He's going to construct it right there. Awesome. And now he's going to construct again. I don't want to do this. I wanted to do a reveal action by now. All right, let's see which one we've gotten this time. Oh, we got another terrible one. Oh, man. All right, well, that's two construct actions. That's two Lux. That's awesome. And he is also going to have to flip his over. He's got, he's on his, he's gone through one vial of Lux already. And these are terrible light streams. He's just, again, going to back up one, two, and then he's going to pay the one Lux to move one more. So there we go. That's him. He could have used one more attack if I wanted to. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm not going to move yet. I'm going to make him attack. I've got that charged Lux emitter. I think why not? Pay three Lux in one action. Attack all targets within two cells, then push them away within two cells. Oh, that's, that's terrible. That's not going to work. 
within two cells isn't going to work. Never mind, we're just going to do what I said before. We're just going to move all the way down there. Okay, those guys are done. Our characters are done. And we're going to move into the shadow phase. So we're going to start by advancing the menace track. And again, i got to make sure I remember this card. If you don't kill a shadow with a single attack, it makes a counterattack. All right, mental note. Now, also, I have put, we have to go ahead and do eight damage. So I'm going to have to drop this. We're going to have to bring this thing here twice. Four, three, two, one, four, five. Yeah, that'll be perfect. All right, that'll be the best way to do it. All right, that's going to show how much damage we have to do. The next thing I have to do is activate this, and I think I just sent this guy to my his death. One, two, three, four. He's four squares away, and the Berserk Awakener has a range of four. Oh, this is going to be terrible. One, two, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four. You have to count everything orthogonal in this game. There's no diagonals. So sadly, I'm going to be taking, this person's going to do three actions to do four damage each, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty. He just did 12 points of damage to this thing. All right, we're going to go ahead and roll to see how that goes. So we're going to roll our attack die for our creature here and he has rolled just a normal attack so that's a hit that's awesome come on miss oh he did not miss he got a that's going to be another hit so we've taken eight and let's see what our last one is and they hit wow 12 damage so he's going to try to mitigate some of that so they're going to be taking 12 damage because this thing does four damage per attack and that's three attacks 12 damage i'm going to play this first use this card to prevent two damage from an ally i'm going to do that so now he's only taking 10 damage now I think I can go ahead and discard one for each of those hits. We're going to discard three, so I'm going to take away three of the damage. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. All right, so that thing did 12 minus five is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I got absolutely wrecked by that guy. That was not the best play in the game. Now that the Herald is gone, we have to go ahead and roll for our other blips here to move them around. Let's see where they go. They're going to be moving towards the Alpha. So this one's going to be moving down here. Now the interesting thing is this one's going to hit this and bounce off because the light stream is facing in that direction. So he's going to make it weaker. Now the interesting thing about that is if it were facing in this direction, not only would this blip make it weaker, it would also move in to the light stream. But that's not the case. So this one is going to flip to this side. And that makes a triplet, which is awesome. I don't know how I'm going to get Umbra for this because I'm not, don't, I know he's the one that made it, but it wasn't at the time of this creation. But there's a triplet right there that just happened. So I believe that's going to go ahead and destroy this and flip these is going to be the plan. These are all going to flip, and this one's going to stay because that wasn't part of the triplet. These were. So our light stream has gotten a little bit weaker. Those two have moved. These two up here are going to move. This one is going to move down. But it's going to stay on the planet. They like to protect the planets from what I understand. This one has moved towards the alpha. This one is going to move towards the alpha. And that's going to be the end of all our blips moving. We're going to go ahead and spawn another set of blips. Let's see what we got. We have spawned them here in this area. So we're going to go ahead and put a blip into each one of those places. So we're going to reach into our bag and pull out some blips. Let's see what we have found. We've got, this one will go right here. Let's see here, can it even go, yes can, right there. This one, nope, this one can go right here. And this one can go, oh, this one's gonna double spawn because it's next to this guy. And since we rolled the alpha symbol, it's gonna go right there. The first one's gonna be placed here and the second one's gonna be placed right next to it up there. I know it's kind of way off in the camera shot, but at least you can see it. All right, then we got one more I think we have to place. Yes, we do. We have one more we have to place right down here. But I don't think I can. I have to place it on the alpha, so it's going to go right there. Now, again, all our characters are going to regain all their uh, actions. We're going to gain back one card for the Pioneer. Let's see what he got. He got a Luminous during the construction action of a teammate. He or she can build an additional path. Oh, that'll be awesome. All right, that's going to go right there. We're going to move on to our other characters as well. Our Cyclops is going to gain back his three actions, and he is down to three cards. He gets to gain another card. Please be the protection Leatherback. Pay an action in and two lucks to avoid damage until the next turn. Your turn ends. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I totally need that card, and he needs to get in front of that Awakening right about now. This person got absolutely wrecked last turn. She's going to get, what, one, two, three three, four. She's got one, two, three cards. Let's see what she got. Lightstream Surfer. We've seen that one. Master of Arms. We've seen that one. Another Lightstream Surfer. All right. Awesome. So then her super card is probably one of these two. That's too bad. I was hoping that they would get it. And the last person we have is the Breathless. The Breathless has one card. So two more. I get target acquisition during an attack turn of an ally. You can increase his range by one. Oh, that'll be really good. All right. And the last one. 
is the same thing. Oh, that'll be really good. I think that might actually help us. All right, we're going to start down here with these guys. I'm going to give both of them one Umbra each. We're just going to go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to move them both at the same time pretty much. This person is going to go ahead and start by paying two Lux to go ahead and throw down another set of light tiles. So that means he's used the last of his remaining Lux. He's injected it into his little container here, and he only has one set before he's going to become corrupted. But we're going to draw a couple tiles out of here, and hopefully they're good ones. That's a perfect one. It's going to go right here. Hopefully we're not... Nope, we haven't made... Oh, well, look at this. We created a triplet, and I totally missed it. Right here's a triplet, and I missed it. Well, it's a little bit too late. We're just going to continue playing. But there was a triplet right there. We would have gotten three Umbra for it. That actually would have helped us a lot. We could have bought something for that. But we're going to go ahead and put another token down. We've gotten this one. We're going to put it right there so it all connects. He's going to pay one, two to move right there. And he's going to pay one more Lux to move into the Citadel. So he's down to six Lux. Next, we're going to move this person. One, two, three, four, five, I think is what we're going to do. One, two, three, four. Four, five. It's going to cost her, him or her three lux to move that distance. So the Breathless has lost one of her, his or her charges of lux. It's going to go like down to one. She has, I guess, a lot more than a lot of the people out there. All right, they're all done. We're going to move on to our other two characters. We're going to go ahead and move over here for one of our movement. We're going to do a construct action, and that person is going to lose a lux, bringing her down. To zero. She has no more luck vials left. She's on her last set of lux. But we are going to draw a token out of here and see what we get. We've gotten one of these. All right, that's not too bad. I'm going to try to get to this guy. Move one more here. We're going to do another construct action. And we're going to see if we can get there. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play my card. Oh, it's not really going to help, is it? No, it's not. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this down. Okay, that's perfect. I can actually hit him. Okay, now these I lied. These are actually going to have to be less powerful because I'm placing them next to a herald. So these are going to go like that. Okay, good. I didn't do any kind of triplet. That would be bad news. I'm going to move there. One, two, three. I'm right there. I can attack him now. I have an attack card. We're going to go ahead and use it. It's right here. Master of Arms. I'm going to play this. During an attack action, use the overload of a weapon without damaging it. That's awesome. We're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pay a Lux for that. So it's down to... They're down to six Lux. That's it. And then they're going to get corrupted. Let's see what we can do to this guy. So he's going to attack with his Light Spear here. And my overload is a bonus attack. So I get to attack twice. So I'm just going to roll both dice and see how we do against this guy. I'm going to try to take him out. We got some hopefully really good rolls. So according to the dice here, I've got a hit plus one, so our weapon does a good deal of damage. Let's see here. I think it's going to be, where is it? Where to go? What's oh, right here? It does three damage. So now it did four damage to him in one shot. But now I'm going to look at this one. This one says <laughs> it's a hit minus one. So now it's only two. So two plus four is six. I did six damage, which isn't too bad because I only have to do, what, three times or two times the amount of people out here, which is eight. So we've done six. That's pretty good. Now, the only problem is that's the end of their turn. They're not able to do anything else. And whenever you attack a herald, that herald starts out completely revealed. After you hit it once, it gets partially revealed, which means I'm going to put it down. And if you hit it again, it disappears and you have to reveal it yet again. That's the end of their turn. We're going to move on to our Cyclops' turn. And I'm going to place these six damage next to it here real quick, just so we remember. Now, our Cyclops has to get there. I don't know how it's, this person's going to get there. One, two, moves two squares. That's about the best I can do. And I think I'll move one more, three, spending one Lux. And that's the end of all of our characters' turns. We're going to go right into the enemy's turn. So we're going to go ahead and move our track up one. And this did not happen. If you don't kill a shadow with a single attack, it makes a counterattack. I did not attack a shadow. I attacked a herald. They're different from what I understand. All right, we're going to move into the rest of the turn. All right, it's now going to be the Herald's turn, and he's going to probably wreck this person's day. He's going to roll the dice. He gets three attacks here against him. He missed. That was awesome. The second attack is a hit, and the third attack is a miss. Wow, he totally... Wow, I'm still alive. That guy's still alive. That's unbelievable. All right, so that person has only taken four damage. For only taking four, one, two, three, four. Oh, my gosh, this person is still alive. Unbelievable. 
Now I've totally neglected the rest of these blips. Hopefully it's not gonna be the downfall of me. We're gonna go ahead and roll and see where they move. We're gonna roll our die. We got, oh, an Omega Plus. So that means they're all gonna move twice towards the Omega, which is gonna be over here. One, two for this one. This one's gonna hit the light stream, make it become, oh, what is it? Weakened, and then it's gonna kill it. This thing's gonna hit this one, weaken it, and kill it. This one's gonna move two that way, two this way. These two are both gonna move one, two this way. These are gonna move one, we can't get into that one. Move one and stay there. This one's gonna break this one and then move into it. This one's gonna move one, two right into this stream and kill it. So these guys are getting closer to this Citadel slowly and slowly. So the Mainer does get an extra card because he used one and he's got his super card. It says pay three Lux points and one action. Choose to jump to a near cell or reveal an adjacent enemy. Then you can attack. Oh, that's going to be awesome. It's going to, it's going to corrupt him because his board, he's sitting with only two left. So he's probably going to corrupt himself to use that card, but I think it'll be pretty awesome. Now, the rest of our characters are going to go later. I'm going to see how he does against this person. If he's able to take it out, this could be the end, or there could be a lot more. And if there's a lot more, I've got a lot of trouble. Look at all these blips. All right, we're going to go ahead and attack with that guy. He's going to spend one. No, he's going to spend three lux. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to spend three lux to choose to jump to a near cell. I'm not going to jump. I'm just going to stay right there and reveal an adjacent enemy. Now, remember, this person is partially revealed so now i'm going to fully re-reveal that enemy and now i get to make an attack so i'm going to go ahead and attack so i'm going to roll my dice now i do take three lux for this so let's do that first so paying three lux is going to be one then we have to flip my board here two three now this person is fully corrupted and we're going to go to the other side of the card so this person still has the same amount of speed as a free action, you can move to an adjacent cell and attack again. Is that the same one he had before? Yes, okay. So a lot of him stays the same, but he's able to walk into the darkness if he wants to, but he, that's not advisable. And we're gonna go down to two actions, three speed still, because we've gone ahead and used one with this card. Now, if I run to zero lux with this character in this state, dead the character's gone now if we ever lose two characters in one mission we lose the game so hopefully this killing if this person dies doing this it's not the end of the world because we got the other three characters so we're going to go ahead and use our light spear it's all part of that one action and we're going to roll our die and see how we do we got a what is a critical hit if the shadow is revealed and i did reveal him so a critical hit for this character means that i'm able to do as a free action, you can move in an adjacent cell and attack again. Well, I got nothing else I need to attack. I killed this. I did another three damage, which is eight, six, seven, eight, nine, which is enough to take out the Herald, which means I believe I'm going to gain an Umber for it. I don't see why I wouldn't. There might be more if you kill a Herald, but I'm not quite sure. And we're gonna go ahead and then do a move action. We're gonna move on to this thing, and then we're gonna perform an a mission action. That's going to be great. Oh, maybe I want to buy something first. One, two, three, four. I got four bucks. I could buy, what can I buy? I could buy a stroke accelerator. Increase your weapon damage by two until the end of turn. So just in case, I'm going to grab that. If this isn't the end, I need to make sure I'm ready for what comes next. I might have to shoot some of these blips and I'm going to need to get them real good. So if we look at our mission card, it says to go to mission test I after we've killed the Awakener Herald, reached the objective marker, and performed a mission action. We've performed an attack action, and then we're going to go ahead and do the mission action now on top of that. And here's our mission action. It says, you find the fugitive, but it's not what you expect. Thank you for trying, Shoal. In the full game, a debriefing will conclude the mission, and you get, the, you get to the information phase. All right, now I'm going to gain plus one to all our factions, I'm going to get two points to, I believe this is going to be upgrading our, cit our Citadel, which is meaning we're going to be able to get some cards that are going to help us in the future. So that's it. We have managed to take out the Herald and we stopped this. Now look at all these blips that could have came down here. Our Citadel didn't actually take any damage, which is really good. We did a great job. This was an awesome game. I'm really excited for this when it comes out.
So we have completed the mission for the Kickstarter for Shoal by Lunar Arc Studios. Now again, remember, this is all a prototype. I want you to go check out the Kickstarter to see what else is going to be part of this game. I'm excited for all the potential that is inside this game. I really am a big fan of the way the card mechanics work, where you can use them for up to three different actions. I think that's really good. I like the fact that it's very cooperative, and the fact that you even have cards in here that are going to be able to be played with your partner, even on their own turn. I think that's a great system and really gives a lot to this game. For example, we've got this one where I can actually give them more light on their turn. So that gives everybody something to do during other people's turns. I'm excited to be able to create this big, huge, giant citadel in the middle of the board. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And gaining upgrades and the fact that this campaign is going to be great. Now, again, I believe you can also do one shots as well, and it'll tell you kind of how you should set your guys up. Now, this is just a taste of what is going to be coming. There's a ton of miniatures. There's going to be lots more enemies. There's even going to be way more characters you can be than these four. So this is just such an ambitious project, and I'm really looking forward to what comes out of it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough, and I hope this helps you decide whether or not Shoal is for you. Please check out the other videos and read the Kickstarter to make sure you get your full idea of what this game is all about. If you enjoyed the preview, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the next set of playthroughs come out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Now, again, this is a prototype, and so I may have made some mistakes and errors through this game, but at least you kind of get a general idea of how this game is going to flow and the mechanics involved in all the different characters and the enemies. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table.